Hello, good evening, and welcome. My name is Mario Varadis, and this is Ash of God's Redemption. Ash of God's Redemption is a tactical RPG game mixed with a rich uh, you know, choice-based narrative game where your decisions have consequences, similar to something like a Telltale game, or the most apt comparison I've seen to it is something like Banner Saga. A lot of similar DNA with that game, for sure. Uh, like Banner Saga, this is a very beautifully drawn game. Looks really, really cool, um, and it has a cool little story. From what I've seen of it so far, it should be pretty interesting, I think. Uh, we'll play this for a few episodes. They don't have a release date pinned down for it yet. The, uh, the Steam page for it says March 2018. Uh, the developer was nice enough to send me a copy here early so I can take a look at it for you guys here today, post a few videos for it, and we can see what we think about it. And then once we get closer to release, we can maybe get back into the game a little further and get a little deeper into it. Anyways, let's get into a brand new game of Ash of God's Redemption. Classic mode. So there's a story mode, which basically is uh, just auto fighting, uh, and you don't have to worry about too much about the combat or anything like that. We're gonna stick to the combat because I want to I want to experience both halves of it. Um, but if you want to stick for the story, totally playable like that too. Apparently, classic mode is what we're gonna do today, though, and we're gonna get right into it here. Uh, year three hundred since divine retribution, the spring equinox. Holy cow, you guys. That was absolutely amazingly animated. Uh, I loved it. It's a cool introduction. I've got no idea what's going on right now, but it looks amazing. Oh, that was so good. All right, let's get into the game here further. One thousand and two years since Divine Retribution, the end of winter. The Vale of Mercy, foothills of the Milky Mountains. Seven hundred years ago, you and the other Kuros took to the field of the Drowsy Deep to prevent a great calamity, the reaping. Your self-sacrifice should have destroyed all reapers once and for all, Nine years ago, you began feeling a growing sense of unease and decided to roam Termi Terminum to find the reason. A month ago, you met a temple guard at the town of Gordon. There was something peculiar about him. Feeling a long-forgotten sense of dread, you realized it was an Umbra Reaper in disguise. He noticed you, too, but chose not to pursue. He merely winked at you, bowing in jest. The return of the Umbra forewarns the impending reaping, so you head to the Milky Mountains to find the local Cirrus, you hope to learn the time and place of the coming reaping and prevent it. So clearly, uh, we had those guys were facing those, those, those kind of pale guys at the beginning here that the, the those that group was facing was the the reap the reap the umbra. Okay, and they're they're the reaping was what they were doing there, I guess. 
and uh, these nine Kuros were trying to prevent it by, by killing themselves, it looked like, sacrificing themselves for it. When you stepped onto the narrow path, you noticed several sets of footprints. At the time, you thought that other people were seeking Cyrus's advice must have anticipated you, but no. They're robbers looking for an easy target. Time to act. Blue tiles indicate where your character can move during this turn. Orange tiles indicate extra moving distance. Your character will spend some energy to move there. Okay. So, okay. Select the ability, quick strike. And then you can reach enemy and click the enemy unit. Okay. Most attacks allow you to do damage to either enemy's health or their energy. Select damage. Okay. So we're going to kill this guy's health. He's got 10. We've got 65. We're a bit stronger than he is. He's level 2. Looks like we're level 16 right now. So we're just going to wail on this guy. Ow! By damaging an enemy's energy, you reduce their options by, by because faster movement and powerful abilities require energy. Moreover, an enemy, if an enemy has zero energy left, double damage is dealt instead of energy. Oh, nice. If the enemy has a lot of health, but only five energy, this enemy has a lot of health, but only five energy. It makes sense to strip him of his remaining energy to do double damage to health. Okay, so we can move first and then ask questions later. All right, so this guy's got 28 health and five energy. We can select Devouring Blow and click on the enemy and choose energy this time. Take away his five energy and all but six of his health. And then we can end the turn. It looks like end the battle, but I think they mean turn. Uh, we get uh, 295 seconds to make our turn right now. So let's just uh, smash this guy in the face right now. Doesn't really matter at this point. We can knock him out. Uh, I'm going to move behind this dude here. I don't know if like it matters as far as like behind or anything like that. Sometimes tactical games do matter like that. Uh, we have quick strike or circular hit. Does 32 damage. Otherwise, this just does uh, 16 damage. Either way, we can get him. Let's try circular strike just to see how it hits, though. Oh, so this is going to hit like multiple enemies, it looks like, possibly. That could be cool. All right, so victory. Not too bad. Tutorial mission, obviously. Rock to screw that one up. You were about to knock on the hut's door when suddenly it's flung open. A woman appears on the doorstep. Your heart leaps from your chest. She's the one you'd left behind when you went to fight the battle of Dale of the battle battle for the Dale of Datura. She's the one you loved, Ama. Well, that's convenient. Also, I mean, she's a pretty good seer if uh, she knew we were coming like that. So I, I, she's legit. I'll tell you that. In a detached manner. Blance, what took you so long? It's been 702 years. You managed to survive when 12 of your brethren perished. Did you go into hiding? Please, call me Hopper. I'm already used to the new name. I was called Blance when we were together. I wasn't hiding in that battle, you know. I was wounded. Pierced by arrows. That's why I didn't complete my task. Yes, I've heard the legend of the 12 brave ones who cast an enchantment on themselves and turned to stone. And they achieved their goal. Now the land is free from the plague and the reaping. The price was too high, though, if you ask me. Why'd you come here looking for me again? I wasn't searching for you, but the local Cirrus. There are signs. Bestias are leaving the forest of Datura. The Vandal Witch has been sighted in the woodland trails. I stumbled upon Nakara and, and Gordon myself. They have returned. Another reaping is nigh, perhaps. That's a foolish question, Hopper. Do, I do not foretell the obvious. You might as well have asked whether winter will follow autumn. The reaping is coming. You know it. All loose ends must be tied. What do you mean by tied? One day, the final reaping will come. The question is, will there be anything left of this world afterwards? Why would you care, though? Aren't you immortal? I am the same as you, Ama. Even if we're both Umbra... We have long embraced the human way of life, and I care about Terminum's fate. To the Reaper, we are no more than specks of dust. This time, we don't have 12 comrades willing to sacrifice themselves. Among those still alive, some will succumb and become Reapers themselves. Do you really want to get involved? I need to stop the Reapings. It's my fault they're happening again. You need to get off your pedestal. We are maggots, the lowliest servants luckily enough to be seated at the di dining table. Are you looking for the forsaken gods of this land? I have a book that describes the life of one. Here, take a look. Have a good laugh reading this nonsense. Thank you for the book. I've been searching high and low for similar records, but still. When and where will the reaping begin? I need to be there. That's where I'm needed. I know it. The souls of the dead have tortured me with guilt for 700 years. Help me. Looking you in the eye. Give you the knife you keep in your bag. The kind our brethren sacrifice themselves with. Give it to me and you'll get your answer. 
pity. I really hope to use it. I doubt anything will kill a reaper. Well, there you go. But why do you want it? The reaping shall occur the day of the vernal equinox in both the north and the south in the towns of Woden and Albius. I wouldn't waste time if I were you. Sadly, I don't have time to reach the north. Farewell. I hope our paths cross again. Though you still haven't told me why you need the knife. I saw you kill me with this very knife, Hopper. So, I hope our paths never cross again. Farewell. Cool. Alright. A little introduction to Hopper. What does one need to meet old age in peace? Only to avoid a major disaster. Man, this game is really pretty. Year 1002, Burkana, the kingdom of Odala, city of Albius. The spring equinox. Eighth year of peace since the last war. A retired captain of the guard and his daughter are strolling through the festival market. Hmm. She kind of looked one of those guys from the beginning with the kind of white and red, maybe. Not the not the not the Kuros guys, the guys that killed themselves, the the bad guys, kind of. This is most bizarre. Oh, Gleda Baron, Baron Brennan, Brennan Brennan, Gleda Brennan, speaking to herself. This is most bizarre. A woman in strange clothes is walking away from the town's hall. Her beauty should be turning heads, but I see to be the only one noticing her. Glad are you daydreaming again? You nudge your daughter as you see Bar Baron Trouble, the Burgo Burgomaster of town, approach you. Grinning. Good day, Thorn. How are you, How are you, Gleda? I take it there's a reason you've been combing the market since dawn, looking for a gift for Leaky? Uh, yes. How did you know? Albius isn't a big... Patting you on the shoulder. Albius isn't the biggest town around. There are too many captains of the Royal Guard here, and fewer captains' wives. And only one of these wives celebrates her birthday on the festival of the Spring Equinox. Please give her my birthday wishes. With gratitude. I will, Burgomaster, though you are most welcome to stop by and do it in person. The Burgomaster is eager to carry on, but one of the citizens calls his name. Trouble nods to you and tends to his business. Looking at the retreating Burgomaster, a stubborn old man. He seems reticent. I've heard he's a distant relative of the king himself. The distance of their relation may be the, his secret to his longevity. Well, we got carried away and now we're no longer closer to picking a gift for Leaky. What are we going to give her? Will you give me a hint? What would your brother like? Uh, okay, so we have to give Thorne a hint. Uh, the icon in the dialogue window means the choice will have far-reaching consequences. Okay, so uh, it looks like it, it's, for my previous playthrough, I got this far. So it has the I, I'm, options I chose grayed out, it looks like. So they know which ones I've taken already, looks like. Um, I'm going to still gonna go with what I did originally. Uh, if only Mac came to visit. They say there's trouble on the borders, so your brother's really busy. Hope at least he finds time to send his mother a letter. I hope so, too. He would have known what to give her for her birthday. I'm sure you can manage on your own. And we have the town market. Festival market. For the spring equinox here. Uh, let's go talk to Gleta. She wants to say something. Was there something you wanted to discuss? I know what mommy really needs. Health for her aching heart. With hope. Is there any way to improve her health? Magic? Divine intervention? I do not believe in magic. The gods, it seems, do not even help their own servants. Do you remember what the temple is called? The Temple of Divine Retribution. It would be silly to expect any help from them. I knew... I wish we knew why they had to exact retribution on your mother. Then we should content ourselves with what the marketplace has to offer. 
I win. I will win tomorrow, and I shall win tomorrow's fencing tournament in her honor. Do you really think she takes pleasure in watching her daughter hurl herself at another's blade, even if it's a practice sword? Uh, mommy used to fence when she was younger, or I'm a better fighter than anyone who signed up. Let's go, Mommy used to fence. In a bitter voice. I could never understand that. Thank the gods she didn't have to use all her skill even once. Alright, so let's go buy something. Alright, so we have uh, the pat Patagang stall for clothing and uh, textiles, or we get the jewelry shop. Let's go to Rask's shop. Speaking to herself. Did Dad find out I where I really go during my lunchtime strolls? There's nothing criminal in it, but I'd rather nobody knew of my manuscript hunting. I said I went to the pastry shop, which isn't exactly true. I just hope Rask doesn't give me away. Gleda, this is Rask, an old friend, an expert in all kinds of curiosities. We've known each other since Oda. Hello, Rask. It's been a while. It's been three years, my dear Thorn. We've run into each other now and then, but ever since we arrived in town, freshly retired and bought a silver necklace with a garnet, you've forgotten all about my shop. Are you here to pick up a new gift for Leaky? Uh, it's been three years. Okay, so it's, it's, uh, let's get, you got, that's what we're here for. You guessed right. I remember the last time you bought a birthday present for her during the spring equinox. I won't lie, I've been happy to have you bought jewelry for me every year since. My wife has been interested in jewels in the last few years. However, the garnet necklace is her favorite, and she's been feeling better in recent months. Is it true Garnet's, Garnet's aid a weak heart? If I'm not mistaken, Garnet's possess no magical properties. But some other stones do. Potions cannot heal an aching heart, but my family but family love can preserve it. Though I have heard that there is a particular, particular skilled healer in Ursus, undoes her name, but even she cannot perform miracles. Uh, let's ask about the lady healer. A lady healer from Ursus, I've heard rumors. We have been to Ursus and visited the men here there, but it did not help one bit. The healer was not home at the time, and they say she and her daughter could be wandering elsewhere for years. We can't exactly camp on her doorstep, can we? Didn't the men near help you? In a strained voice, my wife and I visit all the men years in this kingdom, and in the neighboring ones as well. We talked to the Holy Fathers of the Temple of Divine Retribution. Leaky's sick heart is not a simple disease. It is an inborn defect, aggravated by a difficult delivery of her second child. The men years cannot heal defects, just as they cannot regrow severed hands. Before we mentioned men years, we were discussing other stones. I don't offer anything to anybody without a particular reason. Nonetheless, nevertheless, I have premonitions of these past days. Providence must have brought you to my shop today. You are looking for a gift, and I want you and your family to survive the troubled times to come. Call me superstitious. Or even crazy, if you like. I hope I am mistaken, but unfortunately my premonitions almost always come true. And you, Thorn, will benefit from the Strix. It is very expensive, but you can pay me in installments over several years. Rask reaches into a box and places a highly polished stone on the counter. The metal setting is very unusual. It looks like an insect clutching the stone tightly in its legs. If this large Strix reduces in size, the platinum will base will squeeze its paws together tight to hold it tightly. Consider it magic, if you like. Uh, I've never encountered magic. Tell me how the amulet works. Magic is pretty useless. I don't waste time on this. Let's, uh, I've never encountered magic. You did not reach the edge of the world. Did you not reach the edge of the world in your younger years? And did you not see the veil surrounding T Terminum? Even more, you went to the Wall of Mist and had swallowed many men before and emerged, carrying your father-in-law out of danger. Wasn't that magic? I don't know. All I know is that if a magical remedy existed, I would have cured Leaky long ago. Even if it weren't for sale. I would have found a way. However, your stone here is for sale. Name your price. Such rare items do not come cheap. The price for the stone is 1,000 gold coins. Even if you're letting me pay you installments in for 10 years, I still cannot afford this. If you only knew how quickly decades go by. I mean, at my age, you can think in decades. In our case, every hour counts, right, Gleta? Do you have any other gift ideas? Uh, I would consider the Strix. Here's what we'll do. Take the stone, no deposit, no acknowledgement of debt, and I'll take your word, Thorn. If you, for if you lie, I will lose faith in kind people. If you or your family have no use for it in the next year, you'll return it. Agreed? It would be foolish to decline such a generous offer. Strix it is, even if I have to return it in a year's time. You're behaving oddly today, Rask. 
You take the Strix from the table and put, hide it under your shirt. When you look up, the R Rask is Rask is staring at the ceiling, his face pale. Strix has received 20. At first you are confused, but then you too hear the bell ringing in town. Did the town get a new bell? If I were Trouble, I would have had the bell ringer's head chopped off. Is he drunk again? It's not even noon. And you, Rask, doesn't that bell annoy you, ringing four times a day? You watch in surprise as Rask gets a big sack and starts emptying the contents of his numerous drawers and big and small into it. Uh, he's packing up to leave, it sounds like. Growing pale. Just a matter of habit, my dear Thorn. Time gets you much straight gets you used to much stranger things. You do not realize how wisely you've chosen your gift. A silver a silver may have come in handy, of course, but a strix could most certainly aid you. And if it does, how many years will I be paying for it? Five? Ten? The bell, the bell keeps tolling. Rask slings the sack over his shoulder and takes an axe with a curved handle from the wall. It, is no lo it no longer matters. I hope we'll meet again. But now I would flee the city. If I were you, Opakum Fortress is the safest place to go. The merchant retreats from into his shop. You hear the back door open and close. Oh, he's leaving. He's just leaving us in the shop? Turning to Gleta. Gleta, it looks like La Rask has lost his mind. We should leave. Uh-oh. A little sinister looking here. Um, oh my god. You see Baron Trobel lying on the ground dying. Blood gushes from his mouth, nose, and ears and eyes. To no one in particular, you are tough. You struggle to stay on your feet. Blood is gushing from your nose. Gleda, scared to death, is clinging to you from behind. But rather taciturn. Who are you? Cocking his head. No need for you to know. Use the last reserves of your energy to stay upright. Your heart is about to leap out of your chest. Your throat contracts. Studying your face. Dying already? Uh, I beg you leave my daughter alone. Straightening his back. I don't need either of you. Yet. Towering over you, the monster examines you intently for a few seconds, then extends its arms and points to your pendant. The monster grabs your captain's insignia, clenching in his fist a hiss with a hissing sound. The strix and the pendant shriek shrinks. The reaping will start with your family, Thorn, Thorn Brennan. When the monster vanishes, you shake your head, trying to clear it. Exhaling. Oh, blessed gods. Did you hear what he said said about our family? Quick, we gotta get home. Dark times for the Brennan family. The reaping starts with you. Gleda's outcry makes you stop in your tracks. Your daughter has hastily pulled up some kind of colored plaques from under her belt. That's almost burnt... That's what almost burnt my tummy. Rask gave them to me about a week ago. A long time ago, they were supposed to... Were, were magical battle cards. Suddenly, they became too hot... So hot to the touch. Glenda, Glenda's outcry makes you makes you stop in tracks. Okay, take a look at the cards. Let's take a look at the cards here. Okay. Uh, what do you guys want? Your footsteps and then turn in the direction of the sound. Three thugs are barring the way. Their puffy faces are contorted with mindless rage. Did highwaymen get so... Go brazen into an exact sound town folk, hoping for an easy gain. All right, so we have uh, two to control. Let's see, we got 25, 45. What kind of moves do we have here? Oh, we can place our units. I see. All right, that's fine. All right, our turn. We can't get to him. Uh, I'm gonna go up to here, I think. I don't wanna get too close. And I'll have him defend or anger. Increase your attack by one, increase your defense by one. Increase his defense party members by six. It looks like this is uh, grayed out. It's two energy. Okay, we can play that, can we? No, we can't. Alright, we can't get close enough to these guys, apparently. He's coming in. 
Uh, she can move a lot farther. Okay. She's got a damage deals eight. Can't kill either one of these guys. Damage deals 16. By health and by energy, reduces attack by, your attack by one for a double strike. Uh, or we can do deals 24 damage, increases your attack by two for heavy strike. Well, heavy strike will take care of the the second the middle guy there. Let's do the double strike. Should have gone on a different guy here. Oh, this will do 24. It'll kill him off. Ouch. Okay, her energy is almost gone now. I'm going to go, go smash this guy here, I think. So that's a free move, and then I can do 8 damage with this. Uh, increase your defense by 3, or this will attack by... Deals 8 damage, pushes the tile, tile back one target, and then... Uh, increases attack by 8. And we can take out his energy. I think this might be a good idea. Stop him from taking so many actions this next turn here. Ooh, out of energy. She's taking double damage now. Let's attack his energy too. Or right no, he's double double damage too. Ouch. Alright, let's get him up now. And we'll kill him, I think. Oh, we can smash him back a ways. Ooh. Well, he's on energy again now, so he's not gonna, um... All right, so I need to get her out of harm's way here, I think, possibly. If I do six, it'll reduce his energy down to zero. Let's do energy attack, actually. Oh, she's going to be in a bad way here. Uh, let's go over here. I'm going to do this. Oh, I killed my own daughter. Never mind. That wasn't a good idea. She is dead for my arrogance there. Uh, let's see. Okay, it reduces energy down. And we can kill him off now. He's still not going down here. There we go. You're proud of your daughter, but even so, worried for your life, wife, Leaky. There's no time to lose. You need to get home as soon as possible. A couple of side alleys, alleys later, you open the familiar gate. All right, victory, our first battle. And uh, she died, apparently. Um, I don't know what that means. Uh, we'll find out if there's consequences. That probably is. Probably wasn't good to do the attack we did. She's live, apparently. Mommy, oh, mommy, what happened to you? Mommy, get up! We bought you a present! Stop pretending! Take a blanket for the bed and cover Quino's body. No longer sobbing. I will, in a moment. Of course, Master, I'll do it. 
Clutter, remember to pack Mommy's jewelry box and take the money from the nook into my room. Chop, chop. This is right out of ancient manuscript. The same thing happened 700 years ago. A pain pierces your neck and grows into a fiery noose, strangles you, and you die in horrible agony. This is the infection they called the reaping. Daddy, the back of it, my neck is burning. Let me see. Damn it. You have the same mark. Take a look. Do I have it? Nothing? But how could that be? What sort of plague spares me? I don't, even, I don't even believe in luck. There must be some kind of protection. But what is it? Hope Rask was right. Come here, Cleta. I want you to wear this. You're almost done digging Gleta and Tenor when Gleta and Tenor bring the bodies to the yard. You had to widen the hole intended for the gazebo. Your hands are shaking, but now with tiredness. Tenor buries his face in his hands. Gleta is the shadow of her former self. You realize that if you stop and stand, you realize if you stop and stand still, pain will drown you. But you get out of the grave and take Leaky's body. All right, we'll wrap it up there. We'll pick this up next time. Hope you guys enjoyed this first look at Ash of Gods. Uh, very cool game, I think. We'll get better with the combat. I think we just need a little practice and experience with it. But uh, this is our first real battle. And uh, we'll see how this goes next time. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I'll be back for another episode very soon. Have a good night.